the insufficiency of numbers. And you know, we talked about um, minimum viable product for dependency metrics. Um, and so Matt German Prey had a to do to organize and bring additional clarity. I didn't do my to do if I had one, so I won't throw any shade. Um, here are some good links from the dependency. We talked about the GitHub OSSF scorecard. Um, and I'm getting chat message. Hello, everyone. Hi, David. Okay, so um, who, I think when we, we talk about packages, do we want to, which metrics do we want to start with for dependencies? I, mean, I think we just want to dive into dependencies and get going. Matt, do you have anything this, about any updates on the to-do item? Uh, no. Okay. And I saw it, uh, somebody pasted um, our issue in. Yeah, so just a little bit of background here. I've been working in the risk repository lately just to try to clean up old issues and any pull requests that might've been outstanding. And one of the things I came across, this is how issues are, <laughs> they're kind of useful. Um, was somebody had posted a package phobia <laughs> link. I have no idea what it is, but it might be worth checking out because it looked like it was um, associated with dependencies. And so I just, I roll it in as, as worth taking a look or if somebody had seen it. I hadn't seen this before, but it looks like it's being maintained. Mm-hmm. That was the other thing. There was another issue in there that was in the same world and it was not being maintained. Okay. Yeah, I, haven't heard I like the name. <laughs> well, I, uh, I don't want to install until I know how much of my system resources it's going to consume. Kind of uh, like, yeah. that makes sense. can you uh, paste the link in there? Yeah, I will. Yes. And then the chat or, or there, even better. <laughs> That makes it more permanent. There it is in the chat. So if we want to, if we look at packages, does package, I mean, we've got these personas we created or we listed um, and we were, let's, can we talk a little bit about what we think our MVP is for a useful dependency risk metric? Um, is it just putting down and in, in sort of codifying the dependencies and what, the, what kind of relationships we wanna follow in each direction? So there's, we have some number of dependabilities, um, number, number of dependencies, excuse me. And then there was also some, we sort of, we framed out these dependency oriented focus areas. And so I wonder if, if we wanna maybe make our mission going forward to fill in this grid under six, seven and eight and let that atrophy out through the rest of the focus areas after a little bit of work. Maybe we can revisit what the right set of focus areas is for risk, but it seems from the discussions that dependency is a place that we wanna focus in right now. And we have these three uh, general focus areas that we defined and we listed a bunch of metrics at the uh, dependency risk and downstream project level. 
What do folks think of that? I think anything that can serve as a entry point to mm -hmm. getting um, dependencies better articulated is worth doing. Yeah. So I think anything. Down, I mean, is downstream dependency count like the very first thing that we want to take a look at? Isn't that the, you know, what am I, that's what am I depending on, right? Now, what do I depend on? Yeah. And the other one is who depends on me. Maybe we, rather than saying upstream and downstream, can we just maybe change it to be, who do I depend on? You know. on? Yeah. I depend on? Down the stream is one who depends on us, right? Well, we had this discussion last one. time. So, yeah. so, so can, we, can we change the terminology then so we don't keep having yes. the discussion? Yes, exactly. So to downstream our, people who depend on our project? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> the advantage is that project. that's what people, that's the common terminology people actually use right now. Mm -hmm. And then the upstream dependency count is who do I depend on, I guess then. Oops. Oh. Okay, I guess somehow I got moved to a different cell than I was in. I'm gonna type that. All right. So maybe I mean, isn't the first place that we that people look in then given these definitions is the upstream dependency count? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, that's what that's what S bombs are capturing. Yep. Yeah. For the build one, you know, for the build ones. Yeah, and I would separate uh, direct versus indirect because those are two di very, very different measures uh, for upstreams. Yeah. Direct dependencies and indirect dependencies, the dynamic links versus the statics. Well, it's more than, uh, it's much more than that. I, I would separate those. You can have dynamic and static separate from direct and indirect. But, you know, as, as you are an expert in, your direct dependencies don't, if you only know those, there's so many more dependencies you don't know. <laughs> and, they, and they have two entirely different risk mitigation strategies, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can do something directly about your direct dependencies, your transitive dependencies, much harder to make a, a, a direct, like you have to affect them indirectly, right? Like, right, basically you have to go, my only successes have been, if I have problems with my indirect dependencies, you now have to track backwards to find out what the heck's going on and talk to the, that up, potential or upstream or potential upstream. I, by the way, have had some successes, but you know, I, I, for a, a trivial example, um, one upstream, they included the universe at runtime, even though almost everything was only dependent on for testing and it bloated up everything. You know, you, don't need to do it that way, but you have to now engage with somebody you don't directly depend on in many cases. So the other question is, I don't think I see it here in the list is that build dependencies, supply chain. Do we wanna start, um, do we wanna potentially have those listed too? Yeah, maybe maybe we should start by just di differentiating these, um, you, know, st you know, direct versus indirect, static versus dynamic, build, tests i would separate test from build uh, would... build test runtime mm -hmm. um all right who created the different google doc that i was working on <laughs> uh me i was just i thought you were kind of leading things i was you can delete yeah. mine if you'd like yeah because i don't have access to it all right so this should now work for everyone so for upstream dependencies these are projects i depend on So I heard, I thought I heard something that sounded like parameters. Um, so direct and indirect, um, static and dynamic, build, test, and runtime. Did I do good, David? Sounds uh, good. 
Uh, what can I say? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I do. So is is direct, direct, indirect would be a library that I rely on relies on these other libraries that is indirect. Yeah, the, it, the ones and, you say I directly d depend on your direct dependencies. Yep. Everything that they depend on transitively are the indirect ones. It's turtles all the way down there, though, right? I mean, yep. it, uh, well, <laughs> not not all the way down. There, is, eventually, somebody doesn't bring in a library. Out. I mean, there are eventually programs that don't bring other libraries in. Okay. They may be one line long, but <laughs> eventually there is one. Okay. Thank you for clarifying the transitive part of that. And so with the 11 minutes that we have left, um, I, might, I might suggest we just uh, spend some time working on this metric and trying to flesh it out, but I'm, I'll take other suggestions. This works well. Yeah. We have... I will observe a limitation and then and then try to justify to myself that's okay. Obviously, projects vary greatly in size. You know, if I depend on PostgreSQL, that's very, very different than depending on is odd. Um, but I, I'd like to think this still has value, even though that's a problem, because clearly I'm going to have to deal with different groups for every different project if there's an issue. So I, I, I'd like to think that th there's going to be an obvious problem with this, and I th still think it's okay. Comments? I agree. I, I was thinking that when you mentioned Postgres, I was thinking, is there a difference between platforms, things that are in essential parts of the infrastructure and the, the other things. So I look at operating systems and databases and even things like Kubernetes as sort of essential pieces of infrastructure. I may not import them directly, but <clears throat> I may not be able to deploy without them. So those are almost, um, they're kind of, I mean, I may not even import Postgres as a database directly. It's just sort of implied by my use of it and my calling of libraries that connect my application to it, right? I guess it depends on what are you trying to measure. If you're trying to measure yeah. risk, I don't care. <laughs> will your program work without it? If yeah. if oh, and if it's subverted, will that affect you? If the answer to either of those questions is yes, then it's a dependency. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll I'll chime in with maybe a, an opinion here, um, and in the in, in the most loving and kind way possible, you are pointed in the way of madness. Um, I, I, think, I think the more you can constrain this definition to what you are talking about and, and avoid talking about infrastructure as dependency, like upstream dependency has, has a particular connotation when you're talking about code. And if you, you, can, you can handle infrastructure dependencies and kind of these bigger questions um, and, and maybe a different metric and, and just focus in on, on maybe the historical way we think about it with code. Otherwise, you will wind up with everything is a dependency. Also, everything is a sandwich. Also, everything is a taco, right? Like, Yeah, I, I'm not so sure that a, a <coughs> traditional definition that I'm familiar with absolutely Postgres is a dependency. A dependency means something you depend on. That's it. Well, I, I feel like, Dwayne, your, your point of it being trying to limit in scope what's included in this specific mm -hmm. metric where when we went back to the original spreadsheet I think we had something like infrastructure feasibility in there where we're segmenting that as a separate a separate category of dependencies versus just what's needed to test build run a piece of software um, and we assume there's always going to be infrastructure dependencies it has to run on something mm -hmm. um, it has to be compatible with it so I think just for the sake of keeping this more actionable narrowing it to just the software piece in this particular metric and then say use another metric as a way to if you do want to say track your dependencies on specific pieces of infrastructure and infrastructure software then you measure that separately from the code dependencies and the software package that you're looking at currently yeah that's thank you for helping put better words around what i was being sloppy with 
Um, otherwise, we end up with things like power as a dependency, right? Like we 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 have to constrain this. Well, okay, I, I agree with I agree with you uh, that we need to constrain that. I was going to limit myself to software. Last I checked, Postgres is software. Um, now, I mean, so it's, it's okay if you want to have a division of so infrastructure, not infrastructure. Now we have to define that. <laughs> Wait. So that means we are just focused on the package dependency in this context. W we, okay, Could system packages aren't packages? Could be more than that. Yeah, we admit, so are system packages not packages? So we're only going to talk about language level packages for languages that have language level packages. No, we need to talk about the glibcs of the world. Thank you very much, please. <laughs> yeah, that would be my thought also. I'm thinking about you. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about, for example, for most C programs, there is no language level depend uh, a package manager. The system package manager is the language packager. I mean, it's okay if you want to limit it to a subset, but then we got to figure out how to define that subset. And I think that's a lot easier to define for JavaScript only world, but it gets harder as soon as you acknowledge other systems. Just thinking about how many times we debated that as analysts. <laughs> <laughs> When you're trying well, to uh, front level uh, categories and distinctions between what tool classifies as the as more of an application service versus a platform as a service, and even that designation is not agreed upon. So it is, yeah. I, I would say we we should try to solve that in this. Just be explicit about what's included. Versus oh, I, now that now that I agree with, and I think what we should do is try to figure out what are we trying to do with this metric, and hopefully that will help us you know, figure that out. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm coming at this with a security bent. And so I'm worried about what I depend on and what's going to be subverted. And so for me, I don't care if it's, inf if you call it infrastructure or whatever, if it's subverted, I got a problem. I have a bad day, but you know, maybe that's, you know, other folks I'm sure have different views of what they want this to do. And maybe that's not, you know, maybe, maybe it'd be better to separate that out for some other cases, but I, I, I need, I think it'd be helpful to understand what those, what we're trying to do with the measure. Sorry if that's not making much sense. No, I, I think it is. Um, I think it's like the, can we use it in, in a sentence? Like I'm going to use this metric when I evaluate whether to install this or use this project in my X. Um, mm -hmm. Product, yes. <laughs> um, so I guess the, the question is, uh, is using the project to generic, to narrow down this distinction? Well, that may be another parameter. I see it was deleted, but maybe that's different kinds of projects. So I created an upstream infrastructure dependency metric. Um, if you may, if you're staring at your screen mm -hmm. like a football game, then you saw that. I think I think things that are infrastructure dependencies we might want to think about over there because often those are they're not as explicitly stated in the code, and you know my, the code doesn't say it's the README that tells you you need Postgres and a certain version of the Linux kernel and what other other operating system libraries are required, but those are generally not installed by my package, per se, especially if they're system level. So, would, they'll, they'll be installed by your Docker file. Yeah. So it's it, well, okay. Let's let's call that infrastructure, Dave. <laughs> all right. Let's let's call that infrastructure because it's all about deployment. Um, and that gives us, I think, to Dwayne's point, a tractable piece of of work that can be. Uh, accomplished here. So maybe maybe this should be just um, 
language level upstream dependency count? I think package level. No, because system packages are packages. I think discernible, if it's if it's discernible by compiling the code or running the code. Yes, but I think all the things that we've been talking about as software dependencies are somehow discernible from the code itself. Not we don't have to navigate a readme to get at these kinds of dependencies. Yeah, you don't need to get a readme though. For a lot of these, there's other formats that <laughs> identify those dependencies. They're not in the language level packages, they're in the other files that are identifying dependencies. What worries me is this is this uh, narrowing means we're ignoring a lot of the stuff that's really important that can hurt you from the point of view of, you know, I'm, again, I'm focusing on from a security perspective. So uh, you, you, tell me if I'm all washed up. Counterpoint, <laughs> counterpoint. If we, I, if have, we I have a view, I don't, I, it doesn't make it right. <laughs> if we focus on the alien who's on this spaceship, we're more likely to survive. No, okay. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm here for that metaphor. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I just don't see how we can apply one metric that accounts for both is odd and Postgres. I think you have to treat them a little differently, right? We can, and I don't think it means ignoring the second one in favor of the first one. It just means if you try to talk about everything with the same metric, again, you're gonna wind up in the in the everything, everything is a sandwich, everything is a taco kind of, kind of world. I probably am the only person who has any idea what I mean when I say that, but. Um, yeah, that, the, the I, thing is, I'm not so sure that's true. I mean, you know, <coughs> if, if you pull out an SPDX file, it can definitely identify is, you know, is odd and PostgreSQL. <laughs> there, there's no limitation in typical software bill of materials formats for being only able to find one or the other. So Dwayne, are you saying that be, if we include everything, then the metric is so watered down that it loses its meaning? It becomes unmeasurable, I think. I think we'd be better off doing things at an atomic level, like at the smallest, like, okay, let's just narrow this to be upstream dependencies in the software packages and leave the infrastructure parts, the parts that are squishier, to another metric. And if we yeah, want- I, I, Again, you know, if you're gonna say packages, you need to say language level packages because the okay. system level packages are how, as, as long as we just say packages, system packages are packages. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the simple answer is to then just have two. Yeah. I mean, but, that, we, but if we explicitly state two, does that mean we're also leaving an, out a third category that is not covered in either system or language packages? I would probably, <laughs> uh, but uh, so I mean, maybe, but if, uh, if, if we're going to include installer, there's, no, there's I'm, probably I'm going to go for a container actually here. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm being evil. Oh. <laughs> I'm A container with a whole bunch of packages installed inside it. <laughs> How about we keep it broad and uh, explain it in the filters like uh, packet dependency or software dependency or system dependency in the filters option. In that, in this way, we capture the dependency as a general, and then we have a, a specific uh, section for each. I know some people have to go at the bottom of the hour, and that seems like it was a pretty hard cutoff. But um, I'm creating container level packages. <laughs> I, I do, unfortunately. I have to drop off. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. So but, um, keep going, guys. <laughs> <laughs> See you all. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Oh, shoot. I, I also need to drop. I'm yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. 
You know right. what? Maybe, maybe this is just a sign we need to carry forth later. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I, I've been trying to capture all of this, just okay. like in the Google Doc and in issues. And I, you keep changing things, and I'll keep up. So just keep talking, and I'll keep tracking the best that I can. And right. please understand, Sean. I, I I'm not here to just screw up everything. I, okay. so. No, you raise you raise good questions, and I, I think it's like when do we put the bot? I mean, when do we define the boundaries? Um, it's sometimes maybe it's easier to define the boundaries a little too unrealistically as a practical matter, just to get something defined and then deal with the complexity later. I've seen it happen both ways on chaos. Um, the metrics that people end up using, I think, are often the ones that start more atomic. I think the ones that have started super overwhelming in scope end up being hard to understand and hardly ever used. And I've seen yeah, that totally. not just this working group, but across I, I, working groups, I'd yeah. say that. If, if we're going to do that then, though, I think it's important that the names clearly identify Agreed. what they are. So for Agreed. example, if upstream, if upstream dependencies, what we really mean is upstream language specific dependence, language or package level dependencies, you know, upstream package level dependencies, why don't you say it that way? Uh, something like that, where it's, it's because if you say upstream dependency count, dependency means you depend on it. That's what it means. So if we actually have a subset, then the name should say that. Because it's right now, that's what I, I, I would assume that a dependency is a dependency. It's the software. I, I can limit it to software by implicit, implicitly, but. So you yeah, working so in, in this case you would have you know, um, upstream up, upstream blank dependency count upstream, right. you know, upstream other blank la language package dependency count or something like that and then another metric which is upstream something else dependency count and then another metric yeah. which is upstream something else to, which is totally fine I did right, put your right. code base I think that's the key Dave. yes yeah I, I think that's the key is when they read the name, you should have a very a relatively clear idea of what it probably is measuring. <laughs> As opposed to just collapsing everything into the term dependency. Right. Which is what's because, happening. Because right now. when you say mm -hmm. dependency, I and many other people assume you mean dependency. That means something, everything I depend on. And if you don't mean that, then you need to clearly in the name hint. That you don't mean that. <laughs> can you can you jot down a few of what you think these differentiators would be? Sure. Let's see. Whoops. And so if you I went to the, the uh, yeah. So how about um, you see where I'm at right here? Yeah. The, so how okay? Let me uh, upstream to pay. You know, how about um, let's see here upstream. Uh, uh, language level dependency is a little long. Put it so, here. It's uh, okay. Language, uh, I put code based in the text. I mean, you could just say language level dependency count, upstream language level dependency count. Okay. I'm putting it down here. Language level upstream dependency. I'm going to move that, <coughs> David, down to here. Oh, sure. Are there, so what would be another one? Uh, There's language level upstream dependency. Yeah, I'm trying to make it short is the other problem. <laughs> Actually, container don't, level infrastructure. Don't worry about shortness, David. Some, some of our metrics have become longer simply because they're more descriptive and helpful. <laughs> when you read it, okay. you know exactly what you're dealing with. Are these all, these are dependency counts, right? Yeah, I think the word count is actually a good idea because that gives you an idea because you could measure things other ways like size. Okay. 
So saying count makes it really clear. But I guess to me, <laughs> maybe I've been seeing your, your 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 text too long. <laughs> makes sense to me though. Okay, so this is helpful because then I think each one of these becomes an atomic metric, you know, this low level metric by itself. And if somebody wanted to draw these five or six, whatever the list is there together to get a really broad picture, they can. Um, yeah. but it, so and and you could good. go further and for example, only runtime, you know, you know, insert that too. I, I think right now mm -hmm. we had all these options. I don't think we've made any decision on those uh, various subcategories. Well, this doesn't have to be a perfect list right out of the gate. You know what I mean? Right, right. I, I got it. Got it. I'm aligning the document names and the. OK. Right. Oh, yeah, and you put helpful. language level for, I mean, that's fine, too. I yeah. didn't write that down, but that's great. Yeah. I mean, I, my, yeah. I, I'm just more fussed about being clear. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I prefer this clarity, because I think if we put these types of differentiators in one like meta metric, if we just set a dependency count metric, it's too we much. Bury, it's too much. And then we bury these down as like filters. Gotcha. I don't think it's, it it's, gets lost. People don't understand. Right. We end up so with the this first, all the, the way first, down discussion every time we bring it up. Yeah. So the first words you see are clearly different from the other first words. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Love it. So why don't I'll do this as an action item, even though I didn't do my last action item. I will. <laughs> Welcome to my world. to tell to yourself. <laughs> I will start um, just creating the really rough templates for each one of these, and then kind of get it updated here in the spreadsheet. I have, and I have also... them in the I have them in the spreadsheet already, Matt, under dependency risk and upstream projects focus area at the bottom, which I'm sharing. Yeah, I see. I'm but really, like, I, I was going to say happy. like documents um, but i was going to make a metric for each one of the things yeah. that david had done if you look in the notes okay look in the minutes that's the one place i haven't been so david has been see whoop, stop go up at the bottom of yes exactly so david yeah. has been and i think each one of those would be its own metric Oh, and I didn't write all these. I just I just wrote variants of the same, you know, for the same metric. But I see where you're going. Yeah, I think maybe. I mean, because when you get into like uh, upstream package version dependency count, there I think when you're talking about version level dependencies, that's that's another layer beneath. Um, I think maybe I'll start with library dependency count, language level dependency count language level package dependency count. I think library. Uh, so the three we kind of sketched out are language level upstream dependency count, infrastructure level dependency count, and then package level dependency count. Okay, what's the difference between <coughs> the package level and container. the- Container, sorry. Ah, okay. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but by the way, although I'm sorry to, I didn't mean to slow things down. I'm actually happier that this, that the, we, we now have multiple metrics that are a lot clearer. We're starting to clarify what we're measuring. Yeah. Yes. And then we have we have three shell metrics, one with slightly more development for each of those three. And then um, and then it and then when we start tooling system towards level would this, be system level I'd put under infrastructure. Yeah, I'm not so sure there's a distinction between system level and container. Yeah. And well, I mean, it comes to I think at deployment. So there's there's developer. I mean, this this is where the there's like a matrix of development dependencies and container and infrastructure. And depending how I'm doing my development, I may depend on like if I look at the infrastructure overall, containers may just go inside that. Um, but Docker deployments and distribution is becoming more and more common. So at some point, does do containers become their own? set of special case dependencies that people need to care about. I mean, I, know I think of different things when I'm deploying a container than I do when I'm building a piece of software or installing something on the OS. Having, I don't know, having had to do all these things. Yeah, no, I know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I, 
Uh, I mean, the commands obviously are different. And there's some different files. Um, and I don't care about it if I'm not using, if I'm not, if my infrastructure is invisible to me, I don't care. If my, right. if my container is out of my control and I'm just accessing it, I don't care. Um, right. So there's like, this lets yeah, us sort of filter it to what do I care about in my job? Right. I got that. Yeah. For, for one project I'm on, uh, we're, we're full, we're definitely DevOps, but what that means is, oh, if it's a dev problem, it's your, it's your problem. If it's an ops problem, it's still your problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so from, from that perspective, it's always my problem. <laughs> Yeah, welcome, welcome to the revolution. It will not be televised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it will be live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and I are probably the, uh, the some of the fewer and fewer will understand that reference. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Okay. I mean, I think this is a good, we've got, Right, I, I, six to seven minutes left, but I think this is yeah. a good place to say, all right, we busted through this wall. Yeah, we can keep the, fleshing out this, or flesh out another one, or. You know what I would suggest? Say, why don't you start flushing out the first one? Okay. Uh, one. I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm not. I'm still not quite sold on the distinction between these other two as truly a distinction. Right. Okay. Yes, containers obviously are a thing. So are not containers a thing? Um, I mean, from the point of view of what software do I depend on? And if subverted, what a, what makes me toast? I'm not yeah. sure it matters. <laughs> you know? I think, I think it's, um, I'm also, I also of course think about the provenance of the information that I'm going to use to understand the scope in each case. And the language level dependency count, there's, there's a particular set of definable methods that I might use, even possibly definable pieces of software that I'm going to use to understand language level dependencies that are different than how I might understand infrastructure dependencies. And I think infrastructure dependencies are often not explicitly stated in the package itself. The, sometimes they're assumed. For example, I think the OS is most of the time assumed. Um, databases, it just depends on the project. And then you're getting into what, what level of installation does the package provide? Because some packages will give you an installation script that'll install all of your system level infrastructure dependencies, as well as yep. the software. Been I have there. a question, like how come OS is always assumed? Because I've seen in many cases, the OS is pretty, specifically design, uh, define that we need particular minimum this version. So if you, you cannot treat it by default that OS is assume we need a particular version of that OS as a defined one. Yeah, by, by the way, I, I, I have had some success in identifying OSs, um, the less success than one would hope. Uh, I'll give away the, the, the technique is look at the test for, for, uh, system. What OS does the test require? At the very least, it will work with the thing you tested with. And my right. experience is if you don't test it, it probably won't. <laughs> now the problem with this system is that assumes they're doing automated testing. I feel like sandwiches and tacos should be metrics here for us as well. Excellent. And, and are you going to work hard to define the distinction between a sandwich and a taco? Yeah, I don't think I have to. I think if oh. it's between bread and it has lunch meat, it's a sandwich. And mm -hmm. if it's in a crispy or soft shell wrapped completely, it's a taco. I see. <laughs> but as flavor, it's a taco. Oh, oh, those fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, I think um, this is good. We're, we're, this a good, start. we're, a good we're not done. Here. It's we're a not start. done. No, but this is where yep. we headed in a good direction. So I'm going to take that and run with it. Okay. Right on. Awesome. Right. Well, thank you very much, Sean. It's not mine, I don't okay. think. But... No, it's, it's my phone. Okay. All right. I'm like, <laughs> I, actually, you must have the same cordless phone that I do because my, my phone says that call from. Yep. I probably yeah. do. It's uh, it's the cheap brand. Uh, my cell phone doesn't work in the basement because there's yep. no cell 